North Korea has been firing off missile after missile in the last month alone. The latest provocative move happened Monday. Pyongyang claims the precise target was hit after test firing two short range ballistic missiles. So, what is the Biden administration going to do about these launches? They're in violation of multiple UN Security Council res resolutions. CNN's Ivan Watson joins us live. Ivan, what do we know? Well, Casey, launches of missiles, clearly North Korea showing its displeasure to the rest of the world. We may be going back into one of those periods again where it uses missile launches to demonstrate that. The State Department has condemned this, saying it's a violation of U.N. Security Council resolutions. But no expert I've talked to expects that that kind of condemnation will stop North Korea from its missile launching spree. Patriotic declarations on North Korean state television, announcements of fresh missile launches. North Korea has launched a salvo of six ballistic missiles in less than two weeks. On January 5th, what Pyongyang calls a hypersonic missile, another hypersonic missile on January 11th, two ballistic missiles fired from a train on January 14th, and two tactical guided missiles fired early Monday morning. Weapons tests that appear to be part of a plan laid out by North Korean leader Kim Jong-un more than a year ago. Fundamentally, Kim Jong-un has basically ordered his people uh, to make the type of weapons that he thinks will make North Korea become a very advanced nuclear power. Weapons experts say some of this month's launches didn't break any new ground. But North Korea also fired this new hypersonic missile, which it first revealed to the public last year, and the South Korean military confirmed it flew at 10 times the speed of sound. What North Korea is calling a hypersonic missile is really a ballistic missile at the base when it launches, and then on the top, it has a maneuverable warhead, which means it can um, move in a way that is unexpected. This type of missile poses a new potential threat to the U.S. and its allies in Asia. They're able to launch a missile in one direction and essentially turn a corner, which makes it very difficult for uh, radar systems and interceptors to track it. The latest missile launches, a reminder of the flurry of missile tests North Korea conducted back in 2017. They sparked a war of words between Pyongyang and then-President Donald Trump. Rocket Man should have been handled a long time ago. Eventually, Trump and Kim staged three historic face-to-face -face meetings and a lot of letter writing. We've had, uh, what, you know, during Trump administration, by, by my count, 27 letters exchanged between Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump. Kim Jong-un you know, wants that kind of attention. Former U.S. diplomat Joseph Yoon advises the Biden administration to try harder to engage with the North Korean regime. Otherwise, we're going to return to the bad old days of 2017, which is really a, a crisis atmosphere. So far, Pyongyang has rejected multiple U.S. requests for talks. In the meantime, the Biden administration imposed sanctions for the first time last week in response to North Korean missile launches, targeting North Korean and Russian nationals, as well as a Russian company accused of helping Pyongyang's weapons program. North Korea accused Washington of gangster-like logic and launched two missiles the very same day. Clearly, the North Korean government does not want to be ignored. A final piece of important context here. North Korea, never wealthy, has been going through tough economic times uh, because it's shut its borders almost completely throughout the COVID pandemic, and it's had low crop yields with this terrible flooding that's taken place. And the government has even admitted that it's having food shortages, but that has not stopped it from investing scarce money and resources into its weapons programs. Joining us now, columnist and author Gordon Chang. His latest book is The Great U.S.-China Tech War. Gordon, North Korea claims they're just modernizing their defense capabilities. But what do you think is really behind this string of launches, the sheer quantity just this month alone? Why now? 
Well, first of all, um, North Korean technicians always need the test to validate their designs. But as for why now, um, we never know for sure, but there are two things that come to mind. First of all, the Biden administration's weak sanctions imposed on Wednesday continue lax sanctions enforcement from the Trump administration. And so I think Kim Jong-un thought he wasn't going to get punished for this. But also, um, March 9th is the South Korean election for the president. And one of those candidates is very pro-North Korea. So I'm sure that Kim Jong-un thought that these tests would actually help uh, that candidate. There was that suspected hypersonic missile test last week. And at that time, the FAA actually issued a ground stop of planes and very briefly paused departures at some West Coast airports just out of an abundance of caution, didn't last long. But it does make me wonder, does North Korea have increased capability to make it a bigger threat to the U.S. right now? Well, they are testing hypersonic glide vehicles, and those pose a great threat to the United States because they can drop out of orbit and incinerate an American city with very little warning. The question that the Biden administration needs to ask, which the Trump administration should have asked, which is, where did North Korea get this technology? Because the least likely explanation is they developed it on their own. The most likely explanation is they got it from China or Russia, maybe both. You talk about how the Biden administration and the Trump administration have both failed in some ways in your eyes. But I wonder as well, does North Korea show that it, it sees the Biden administration in a different light than the Trump administration? Is it treating this administration differently? Um, probably not uh, in terms of broad general policy. Um, Kim Jong-un wants sanctions relief. Um, and so he's testing the Biden administration, just like he tested the Trump administration and other administrations before that in their early phases to see how far the North Koreans could push the U.S. So in general, I think that uh, Kim Jong-un's policies and the policies of his father are, are relatively consistent. In terms of taking actions to deter North Korea, the U.S. did just announce new sanctions against eight North Korean and Russian individuals last week. Uh, you say sanctions aren't enough. So what more can the U.S. do about this? Well, those types of sanctions aren't enough because those um, six Korean individuals and the Russian, they were actually proliferating Chinese technology and materials. And so China runs a near total surveillance state. Beijing knows what's going on because North Korea is obviously a very sensitive issue, as is nuclear proliferation. Um, so what we need to do is to show China that we're not afraid of it by actually starting to impose sanctions on China. And since May 2018, um, Trump did not impose sanctions on China. And, of course, the Biden administration hasn't either. So I think Beijing says to North Korea, look, you can do what you want. And by the way, Anna, today is the first day we see a train leaving China for North Korea with all sorts of stuff on board. We don't know exactly what. So you think the U.S. has to do something to basically send a message to China in order to change the behavior of North Korea? Yes, because North Korea, especially these days uh, with a COVID lockdown economy, um, with all sorts of internal problems, especially needs China's support. So North Korea is not going to do anything these days that it believes is going to anger Beijing. So all of these tests have approval in the Chinese capital, which means that if we really want to do something about this, yes, we've got to impose sanctions on North Korea, but we have to go after its sponsors, which is China and Russia, but especially China. It's very interesting, Gordon Chang. Appreciate your expertise. Thanks for being here. Thank you for watching others episode coming.